Hey everybody, this is Kristen from Christopia Studios. So today I'm going to show you the pour and swipe that actually became a dragon. Um, my former one was going to be part of a pair of dragons and ended up being a phoenix. This one will be in cooler colors and is definitely going to become a dragon. I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to mix this color. I got uh, some golden paints um, from Golden, and this was one of the things that came in the samples. That was the, pretty much the only thing that wasn't yellow, but that's what happens when you get golden extras. And I got it because um, I sometimes teach classes with for, for people who can't really afford to get a class. So that's why Golden gave me the opportunity for seconds. So this, this is a thicker paint, obviously. So I'm using quite a bit more um, Floetrol in it. I've got all my other colors pretty much mixed, but um, this is probably too much paint that I just put in there because this is pretty viscous thick stuff but as you can see by what I'm mixing over here I'm getting ready to do instead of the reds and yellows I'm getting ready to do some blues so um and then see what we can do to embellish a dragon over the top of that too So those of you following along, I always, I never say that I um, put this much Floetrol versus this much paint because frankly, I use a whole bunch of different paints. Sometimes I use these that are, that are much more high pigmented, highly pigmented, English major, huh. Um, now these highly pigmented paints obviously take quite a bit longer to mix, so I'll probably speed this up in the video. Again, this canvas is one foot by three feet long and it's gallery wrapped. When I mix my paint, I also add a little bit of Liquitex gloss medium as well. It adds this kind of beautiful finish to dried pores, so I've been doing that a lot. Um, my colors are a lighter green and then a darker green with metallic in it. Uh, there's a blue, the blue is an artist lofts blue in this big bottle. Um, and the black is my swipe color. Oh, and, and I also did a copper metallic, uh, color that I used with folk art paint, um, copper metallic. There are two to three drops of OGX hair serum that I put in every color, but not in the black swipe color. I didn't want like holes up in my swipe color where I'd have to paint black in the canvas again later. Um, so I'm just mixing all of those things together. The OGX is only two to three drops in each color except the black. And do remember, that you only need to stir a few times. I stir um, about seven times in like a figure eight fashion. Seven's not a lucky number. It's not superstitious. It's not anything like that. It just kind of helps me remember <laughs> not to stir more than more than a few times. So that's all. So I just tend to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then I'm done. Um, and that is the color mixing. So let's get back to a regular speed for the pouring part. What I do is decide kind of how to shape the top of this because the other one I did I wanted to paint a dragon head on like the face going that way into the black but um, I didn't really shape anything I just moved the colors around because I wanted that wonderful swirl of color 
This one, I want that too, but I also kind of want more of a shape up this end so I can make sure my dragon is full of color. This other one's starting to look like it's gonna turn into a phoenix instead, so we'll find out, we'll see. But what color shall I start with at the top? So I'm gonna do, Bit of green, put it all over the place like I did with the other stuff. Now I used some old paint in here, so I have to be very careful to look for um, chunks of paint. I don't want it to dry with a chunk of paint in it. We'll get some blue in here in the green. And that was the deep Christmas glitter green, the stuff that has some glitter in it. Mixed with a just a solid evergreen, forest green kind of color. Get some of that blue. I'm leaving a little bit in each thing just so I can add to the, my edges later. Now, let's do the sea green next. Ooh, that's a big hunk. I'll put some copper up there. This is a lot of paint already on this canvas, and I don't want puddles. And I still have the copper to mix in. don't think it's going to be too awfully dark, but I want a balance of color because that's why I didn't put an undercoat of a dark color because I want these colors to stay true except for the black that gets swiped over them. Black feels pretty viscous and thick. I maybe should have made it a little thinner. Let's we'll see how it swipes. I'm gonna do a little more swiping colors up in here. Maybe some of that copper to get a little bit of a sulfurous thing. I definitely want plenty of my swiping color up here, especially down over the edges. But I want it to stay in kind of a puddle where I'm going to stick the paper towels. paints out of the way. Move all this stuff down here out of the way. And again, I'm not telling you mixes of colors. Mix until your eyeball says it looks good and until it's dropping off of your stirrer into the paint the way you want it. Um, which is usually disappears into the paint without a mound, but if you want it a little bit thicker, make sure it mounds up a tiny bit as it disappears into the paint, but don't, don't let it be so thick. That's bad news. So I'm going to get my, it takes three paper towel halves. My paper towels are the kind that are 
little half towels. So it takes three to cover the entire bit. And then I feel as if that blue needs to be a little more prominent. Woohoo! Yay, blue! I'm going to mix, I'm going to tilt this just a tiny bit to get some of that pink to the edges. But don't worry, I'll tilt back to this other way. I don't want to muddy it up, but I also want to make sure everything is covered. Which is another reason. some of this paint. Paint will drag over these colors. I'm just obsessive compulsive. <laughs> Save the rest for touching up. So, the black is my swipe color. And look, I got three paper towels to swipe and then messed it up. I'm going to use my little spritzer to spritz water on the bottom. Give it a good. Make sure it's damp enough that it sticks really good to that black paint so it will drag it nicely. All right, here goes nothing. Just let it stick down like that. so thick I might have to do a double whammy. Maybe not. Oops, look what I did over here. I think I'm going to do a second pull just to make sure that black's not, well, you know, that black's not too terribly thick, so instead It'll come back up. Don't worry. This is what I'm telling myself. Now I'm going to grab the torch. These colors are kind of awesome. So I'm kind of wishing I had something a little brighter mixed in there too, like a yellow. I think I put my torch where it belongs. That's good. I just have a little creme brulee butane torch. This is to get the bubbles out, but it also helps to bring those cells up. And there must have been the flow trolls making little silicone-like holes on the edge there anyway, so I'm going to have to doctor that a little bit. These cells that are coming up are far larger than the ones that were with the red. That could simply be because they had something to travel on, because they had an undercoat. Those copper cells are ginormous. Okay. Now, see up here where I scraped way too much black off? I'm just gonna fix that a little bit. I'm just gonna use my fingers. What the hell? Just keeping, keeping anyone from seeing bare canvas. Though again, I've said this before, People get too concerned with this stuff in a pour or a swipe 
too early because you really can take a brush or a stick and paint in the gaps once the painting's dry to the touch and you see where the canvas is coming through. It's not a big deal. I see people sometimes on these acrylic pour groups on Facebook and other places just in a panic and wanting to scrape their painting and start over just because they have a few little spots where the canvas is showing through. I'm just like, dude, if you don't have to know how to draw to just paint in a little bit of extra. So the swipe, well, might have given me enough for a tile this time. We'll see. Now I'm gonna take this this time around and I am gonna move it a little bit. I want a little bit more of the cells to go down toward there. And I'm not too terribly concerned about elongating the cells. You know, a lot of people like those perfect little beautiful little cells, but I'm painting a dragon. So I don't mind if the cells stretch out and start to look more like dragony scales than cells. I'm gonna go this way, bring some stuff back. And then I'm gonna move them over this way a little bit, but I don't want those beautiful cells on the edges all off the edges, cause I like them. That's where all my light green looks like it turned up. So I'm not sure I'm liking this one as much as the other one. So while it's wet, I think I might attempt to put a few small details. Or not even details, really, just... is just plastic spoon. I'm going to take a little of this green paint that I have left, pour it along the edges here, and also scoop down into your tray and get some of it, but I just figured it's a gallery wrap painting. It just takes a little more. And since this green has silicone in it. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm not going to ruin it. Well, I might ruin it. I don't know. Because I just might. So I'm going to use this spoon with a swiper to just kind of swipe that green back through there. See? It starts to develop cells as soon as I put it in. I might want a little bit of a rower kind of thing happening down here. Oh, don't put that back in the green. It's got black on it. I already did. Oh, well. But I'm just adding a few shapes. And I'm also thinking there's way too much paint still on this canvas, so... Go down one more time this way, tilting forward. Ah, oh no! But I'm not going to tilt off the edge, obviously. I want that black up there. I'm going to take this, go the other way, take some of that puddle off the middle. like I'm gonna do one more thing to but try not to muddy it up too much and get a little more last of this pretty blue and I'm gonna take a palette knife swipe over this really like that 
bright blue and it's kind of been lost in those darker colors. Same with the light green. It just looks like it's been lost amongst the copper colors. And I know the paint is too thick on my palette as is. So I'm gonna be using a little palette knife. Actually, I think I might use my cake knife up down here, but I'm gonna use my little palette knife up here. Just, just swipe a little bit more of that paint down. Oop. See, look how deep that is. That's just a lot of paint. off my sticks and I take the torch to it again in a minute so some of those colors come back up too close you don't want to cook your paint but I'm just pulling some of those under cells and some of those under colors up to the top of the parts I just re-swiped better. I'm going to tilt this way a little bit just to get some of that back to the middle. <sighs> Am I done? Yeah, it's close to there. I'm going to go up and a little this way. This might look a little funny right now, but it's all going to be incorporated into embellishing the dragon itself. Um, I did these paintings deliberately in order to embellish something into it. Usually I just do a painting like a dirty pour or a swipe and paint what I see, but this time I'm intentionally um, doing these long swipes to do fantastic creatures. I believe that I do have quite enough to cover at least two tiles down here, but one especially. I just used these old yogurt jars my husband got. This yogurt is, he doesn't like it, but he had three of them, so he gave me the jars. And I use my little Too Good Yogurt containers also. They're the best little paint mixing containers ever. And you don't have to think that you're adding even more things to the landfill because you're repurposing them for painting. You can use them a couple times too. I'm just gonna grab a tile and pull. Okay, 
come across it, trying to get another little dollop. what I'm doing here, just making a coaster. I like to make tiles. I'm making this time instead of, sometimes I just make tiles without using the leftovers from painting, but if I have leftovers, I'm going to create tiles and next time I do a show, I can have smaller things that people who can't afford a hundred to four hundred dollar painting might want to take away a tile set for 15 bucks or a coaster set and take it home to enjoy. That's another tile over there. I don't want to ruin that puddle. Alright, so this one we'll put right here. One. Get one more. I'm scraping it off the little diaper. I'm not going to use these diapers again once I. They're actually, they're not diapers. They're um, pee pads for adult beds or um, or child's bed. They're just pads that you lay down so if someone wets the bed, it doesn't get on the mattress. And they work really well, and you can pull the paint off of them really well. Obviously, you can't make skins. Isn't that a creepy, creepy way to talk about your dried paint? My husband, I was like, oh, I need to make some skins out of this color. And we were at an art show yesterday walking around and looking at other people's art. And uh, he said, could we not say that in public? Because somebody's going to think we're like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and we're actually creating things with skin <laughs> so it is kind of a creepy thing to call them but as most of you probably know a skin is simply paint that's dried usually on the plastic I can get a lot of good ones that you can turn into jewelry or um, use in other projects my intention is to collect enough in various colors to make a very large mixed media picture. Like for example, if there's water, I'll use blue skins to display the water. If there's um, dragons flying through it, I'll use all different colors. Or if it's an undersea portrait, I'll use some of my skins to make a coral reef and some to make fish. So um, there's just a multitude of things you can do with all that paint so it doesn't go to waste. Um, I mean, you see there's some beautiful colors. I don't, you can't see this side, but I'll show you another time. Actually, I'm gonna use some of the not so beautiful puddles to make sure my sides are covered. I don't like to cover the drips. To me, the drips sometimes make the painting so I might let some of that just stay white until the painting dries, and then I'll go back in with a brush and paint between the drips. Uh-oh, what did I do here? I tipped the painting and stuck my thumb up in there, I guess. All right, well, I don't know if that's looking like a dragon quite yet, but it's gonna, you can bet. <laughs> And this one's probably going to have his mouth open and be snarling and maybe some flames coming out. But we shall see. I'm not truly pleased about... I, I used too much copper. It made it too dark. But I think it'll be okay. And these cells in here are muddier because the black isn't lacing through them anymore. You know what, maybe I'm gonna... Do one more swipe. Just 
to get that black lacing back up in there again. Gosh, I hope it's not. I hope I'm not making a big mistake. Forgot. Don't, don't do this at home. This is not a good idea. But I don't like that muddy middle without the black lacing, so I'm gonna do my swipe again and hope for the best. All right, got the black lacing back. Not too thrilled about what's happening up here, but you know what? It'll work out in the end because brush painting. I'm gonna speed the rest of this up because I spent a little more time messing with it than I intended to do um, real time, torched it again. I really took a chance swiping it again with the paper towel, but it worked out for me this time because I got that lacing back and I really wanted that, that copper was taking over and it didn't look as good as I wanted it to. So I was really happy with the turnout Please hit the subscribe button down below to see more videos like this one. Um, the next video is going to be the embellishment of this particular swipe. I hope you hit the thumbs up down below and that little bell for notifications if you want to see when the next video goes up. And I hope you have a great and safe day.